Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample questions discussions. We recently covered all our chapter 4 questions from the set A and now it's time to get into the chapter 5 and look forward to some of their questions as well. Uh, just for your information again, uh, chapter 5 will be having 9 questions out of 40 in the examination. So this is another crucial chapter of our syllabus and the sample questions from here would certainly add a lot of boost up on your score. So putting chapter 4 and chapter 5 together will certainly have uh, the great responses in terms of like 20 questions together. Chapter 4 has uh, 11, chapter 5 has 9 questions. So you have 20 questions from certainly the out of 40 syllabus. So let's look at the very first question from this chapter. That is question number 30. Which of the following statements best describe how the tasks are divided between the test manager and the tester? Now these questions are at K level, uh, K1 level. That means it is very straightforward that you need to remember that what are the activities which are taken care of by the test manager and what kind of responsibilities does a tester have. So very simple and easy way to uh, remember that is generally the scheduling part, defining part, designing, uh, no sorry, deciding part, defining part, determining, selecting certain things will be done by the test manager, which is more from a approval point of view. And on the other hand, all the ground level work, which is like uh, being a technical person, uh, writing the test cases, executing the test cases, preparing the test execution schedule, reviewing test cases of your fellow member, and a lot many other things like that, analyzing the requirements, uh, defining the uh, you know environment, which is not defining, designing the test environment, making use of the test tools will be the responsibility of our testers. Now, keeping that context in mind, of course, you can view the tutorials for more detail from the playlist. But right now, let's look at the question. And we have the very first option as the test manager plans test activities and chooses the standards to be followed while the tester chooses the tool. Now, that's where it goes wrong. A tester is not responsible to select a tool for the process. It's more of like the test manager responsibility again, who will be responsible to select a tool for the team and the team will utilize it. That is the testers will make use of it. Let's look at the option B. The test manager plans, coordinates and controls the test activities while the tester automates the test. Of course, automation is a key responsibility of the tester, whereas planning, coordinating, and controlling the activities is the responsibility of the test manager. But let's look because they say in the cushion that which one is the best. So we have to cross-check the remaining two options as well. C, the test manager plans, monitors, and controls the testing activities, which the tester designs, while the tester designs, tests, and decides on the release of the test object, of course, we have got a separate team to do that release management, and we, of course, know them as release management itself. So tester does not have the responsibility of uh, defining the release scopes or deciding on the release of a test object. We never do that. D, the test manager plans and organizes the testing and they specifies the test cases. That's where it goes wrong. A test manager is not responsible for uh, specifying the test cases. It's the tester who does that. So... I think this is very straightforward if you really have good understanding of the responsibilities of the tester and the test manager. And that's where the right answer here is B, the test manager plans, coordinates, and controls the test activities while the tester automates the test. Moving into the next question, which is again a very straightforward question, talking about which of the following matrix was be most useful to monitor during test execution. Now you need to recall what our matrix is first of all and how to read a matrix and understand that. Then once you know how to read a matrix, what exactly that matrix is deriving out, based on that you can understand where this activity is expected to happen as a part of the test process. And that will give you the answer. So right now they are giving you the matrix in the options and the question itself has the face. So you just have to fit one of these matrix in the option into the test execution. So let's look at the uh, matrices here. Option A says percentage of executed test cases. Of course, that's something which can be only calculated once the execution begins. So of course, this could be one of the matrices which can be useful during the test execution phase because it's all about number of test cases executed so far. B, average number of testers involved in the test execution. Now this is uh, not to monitor the test execution. 
This is basically to see the team availability in order to fulfill the need of the test execution, right? Because uh, we generally have to take care of the people matrix as well, that if the team is having the capacity which they really need to have in order to complete the testing in the given timeline. So this is not going to measure the execution as such, but yes, the people metric, which is going to help you define if you have enough uh, people to do that job. C, coverage of requirements by the source code. I think this could be uh, done much earlier, not really have to wait for the test execution to begin and uh, measure such things. This can be done right at the moment. The code is written and we have the requirements in place and we just need to make sure that uh, these matrices are much in advance in the life cycle compared to the testing phase altogether. D, percentage of test cases already created and reviewed, which is for the test design. Now, test design is the phase where you generally write the test cases and at any point of time, no matter what number of test cases you have written, uh, you can calculate this matrix saying that so far, how many are written and how many more to write. So this is a matrix which can be used in the test design phase and not in the execution. So putting it all together, the right answer here is A, percentage of executed test cases, which would be a primary measure. And if you look at the question here, it says, which would be most useful? So that's where we opted out A in comparison to B because B is more of the people matrix, not the exact measurement for the execution tracking. Moving to the next question, which is question number 32, which of the following can affect and be a part of the initial test planning? Now this question is coming in from the process of planning and uh, looking forward to uh, understand that if you know the activities of test planning and what is that you can do. So planning, of course, and overall is to lay out the overall plan, define the goals and objectives of the entire test process. And the only thing which will uh, matter here is the budget, because budget is something which is a part of the test estimation according to the cost and uh, effort allocation. So generally when you do estimations, there are three factors or three parameters which you uh, approximate, and that's budget, that's the cost, time, and effort. So that's something which can be useful at the point of uh, test planning. But if you look at the other, op other three options, test log is of course during the execution, failure rate, execution, use cases, predefined at the requirement level. So none of the other options, that is B, C, D, would uh, be required at the test planning phase or can be affecting the test plan, uh, which you really have to plan for. So the right answer here is, a, the budget limitations, which would be one of the criteria or constraints to be taken into account while uh, doing the test planning, whereas the other options do not conflict with that and they do not affect at all. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We do have more questions coming up from the chapter five and we'll be looking into them in the next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.